to be more used to. This is what my what is working. We're going today. What you see, what you guys are going to I see people walking to a field. That's not working. What. So what's going on the inside the building? They're coming to worship. But who are they worshiping? They, but they may think. Oh, they're, they're, now you're going to add in. Because here, let me show you something. The, 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 the head of the household is who set the tone of what the family does. Okay. The head of this household is Jesus Christ. The head, the under shepherd or the pastor of this house is Pastor Tony Evans. And we teach Christ crucified. Okay, so let me, let we're me just not ask worshiping this. no eggs, where in no Bible, Easter. Where we in the came Bible to worship. You? Hold on, I'm, I'm answering your I'm I'm question. Where? Let me talk. I'll let you talk. Okay. All right. Dialogue is two people talk. Okay. I talk. You listen. You talk. I listen. All right. All right. So in that, answering your question, we teach Christ crucified. So so anybody now, and, and I, I can actually side with you. There may be some people that come in and they have their own ideology of what they're worshiping. But we can't go by what the tail does. We go by what the head does. And the head, and we have made it clear on every website, on our church, on our ground, that everybody worldwide, our pastor is one of the top theologians of the world, worldwide, that we teach Christ crucified. My pastor has preached and teach against idolatry and paganism. It's, it's, it's real simply known. So, again, we all have to be held accountable. Let, let, we can pull up right now, Pastor Nathan, I mean, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, and he actually teaches heretical doctrine. Your guys are under him. He is one of, if not the top or head or the founder of IUIC. But he has a full video that he just put out right now with clips of false doctrine. Now, you're saying Bible, right? Bible, right? So if, we're, if you're talking about us in a hypothetical made up situation of what you think, unless you're unless you're omnipotent or omnipresent, that you can go in the minds of these people walking, we came to... And I did, you know, I love them out of my heart, mm -hmm. but the sense that they come with deception, to mislead people, I think that riled me up a little bit. Yeah. Now that's good though, man, because uh, I don't think it should have been any other way. I feel like you did what an apologist, what a minister, what a shepherd should do, which is you definitely protected the flock because you acted as a, a barrier, like a theological barrier between, you know, you were that barrier between everyone else. That, that was beautiful to see. I, I thought it was an amazing. I was folding the clothes, yelling. Like, he got him. Before I get started, I just want to take a look here at all these translations and we look at this word Easter let's see what it means in Acts 12 and 4 which I believe the only time is mentioned in the NIV it says Passover and in the New Living Translation it says Passover and the English Standard Bible says Passover the Berean Bible study Bible says Passover right the NASB uh, and the list goes on what I found interesting the contemporary English Bible, Good News Translation says Passover. The God's Word Translation, which that's a good translation on some things. Um, I'm not going to make this long before the lesson starts, but there's the KJV and, the, and uh, maybe one or two other Bibles that said the word Easter. Right? The Aramaic Bible, which I look at that at time to time, all says Passover. There's not many other Bibles that says Passover. And, and guess what? The Geneva Bible of 1587, which published in 1599, says the word Passover, which predates the 1611. The Bishop Bible says Easter. The Cloverdale Bible says Easter, right? There's certain even older Bibles that said Easter, but the majority of the Bibles says Passover, I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brethren, 
you followers of the truth, whoever you may be, and shalom to the elect. To the elect. Anyway, I'm gonna try to make this video short, but I'm gonna try to squeeze in as much information as possible. Um, dealing with this situation with Pastor, I believe Tony Evans. I don't even have it up anymore. But this Tony Evans shuts down cult. What does it say here? Tony Evans. Christian shuts down cult. Tony Evans Church. Find out how. Explosive interview. So I don't know where he's shutting anyone down because he never read any scriptures. Basically, he was just trying to win the argument. And uh, you know, I'll try to make this short. I don't know why these brothers come up to this Tony Evans Church to try to contend with the man who's going to defend his congregation or let me say his belief and he's not going to use the scriptures to do it then this man pastor tony evans said well <laughs> this man said uh what is worship which is the reference but we'll get into that too lord's will but then he said basically uh the the brother said well you know tony evans your people are coming in there you know they're coming up and they're worshiping then he says what is worship he tries to control the argument. He jumps in and cuts them off. But when they try to jump in to answer stuff, he said, well, you know, we got to have a complete dialogue. He's just using that psychology on Jake. And Jake don't know how to use it and deal with it. You know, Jake doesn't have the, the means to know how to defend. Or, you know, if you're going to go up in a situation like that, you got to be able to deal with that. You know, this guy says that they believe in the... the uh, crucifixion and everything else so we don't believe in Easter or whatever now at the same time uh, on this Easter when it was Easter Sunday after the sun after the sun worship after Tammuz or let me say Ishtar who, who had Tammuz from the sun which goes back to Nimrod ancient uh, Assyria right that's where it all comes from. So why the hell would you worship the, the crucifixion of Jesus on a day of Semiramis or Ishtar, the sun worshiper? Now, it's well known that Ishtar, the Semiramis, the sun worshiper, was uh, basically believed that she was impregnated uh, and conceived, which means having sex anyway, um, with the son, Tammuz, after her husband Nimrod died. So Tammuz come, right? He comes, brings her a hare, which is a rabbit, and Tammuz loved the rabbit. This is where the this, this story goes. And a wild pig came and killed Tammuz, right? So when a wild pig came and killed Tammuz, she claimed before... Let me back up. Before that, she claimed the sun beamed into her, and that's how she became, became pregnant. And her son loved uh, Tammuz, loved the rabbit. And a rabbit, loved, you know, she equated the fertility with the egg, right? The fertility egg. And this is how you get rabbits and eggs when rabbits and eggs don't go together. Rabbits don't lay eggs. So how is it a day of such idolatrous practices worshipped on a day that they claimed Jesus was crucified. They would have to answer to that, and that's what I would have asked them. you out here on a damn Sunday following you claim doesn't have anything to do with rabbits and eggs, but you're going to let your congregation go home and go to Easter egg hunts, right? They're going to get the chocolate bunnies and peel it, and peel the eggs. Anyway, I'm going to go into the article, but before that, I'll read Luke 21 and 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. You know, this is what happens when you come in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. You don't have leverage because you're going with a, in fact, you're almost just as guilty, if not worse if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you're calling on Jesus the Christ. Let's go to Exodus 34 and 14. For thou shalt not, thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, who, who name is, is jealous, 
is a jealous God. Right? He's That's jealous. Why are you calling on the name Jesus Christ? Right? Why are you calling on Jesus the Christ? That is sick in itself. Anyway, let's head on over here to this article. I just actually pulled it up. This is raw. Who was Ishtar and is there any connection between Ishtar and Easter? I literally never even read this, but I'm going to try to skim through this. Ishtar was an ancient Mesopotamian goddess of war, fertility, and sex. She featured the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Ishtar Gate was part of Nebuchadnezzar Babylon. He worshipped involving animal sacrifice, vices, objects made with her sacred stone. Lapis Lazuli, the temple prostitution. Some people claim there exists uh, there's a connection between Ishtar and Easter. A popular meme has been circulating the internet making that very claim, superimposed over an image of the uh, Ishtar are, the, are these words. This is Ishtar, pronounced Easter. Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. A symbol like the egg and the bunny. Now, I just went into that. Why was it the bunny? Because Tammuz uh, worshipped the um, bunny. He actually worshipped the rabbit, right? And her, the, her, her symbol was the egg because she was a fertility goddess. So, there's no secret that this Easter or Ishtar day is celebrated on a day that they celebrate Easter and how they bring the rabbits and the eggs into the churches. Now, the Christians are learning from us, and so they're now they're trying to remove certain things, but it's still the same concept. We, we are still, um, the, it says, um, we're and still are fertility and sex symbols. Um, after Constantine decided to Christianize the empire, which is true, I read up on that. Easter was changed to represent Jesus, right? But at its roots, Easter, which is how you pronounce Ishtar, is all about celebrating the fertility and sex. Okay? Um, I'm just trying to skim through this. There are several theories concerning the rig origin of the word Easter that are more credible than the uh, Ishtar theory. One is that Easter got his name from Austri, the 8th century Germanic goddess who was assumed was celebrated around the time of the Passover every year. But even this theory has major problems since there is no real evidence that anyone ever worshipped a goddess named Estra. Okay, that's pretty much to the point. Anyway, it says the French word Easter is a uh, physis or paquile. Pa pa I think they put it in here. I can only see it. Based on a Latin Greek, pasak, pasak, right? Which we see that in the Greek, meaning Passover. So we could clearly see, um, even it could be proved that the word Easter is etymology related to the name of pagan goddess such as Ishtar. Okay, so you get the point. And this is what we see. These these brothers, I don't know who they, you know, what part of IUIC they come from or if they're not really seasoned like that. But um, a whole argument would be, well, why the hell are you worshiping on a day, right? And you having this Easter Sunday and you uh, re representing or worshiping the crucifix of Yahawasha, right? Like you're cheering that on or something, right? We're worshiping the crucifix of Yahawasha. In fact, the Passover um, is representing uh, us being uh, delivered from the the hand, you know, a hand of the Lord. You know, as you strike the post. And, you know, for the protection of the Lord as the Lord went through Egypt. So these guys, they're just basically following a tradition that was set up by theologians. 
That's why the scripture says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high. Now, when you go to Luke 16 and 13, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. Look at this, this man's face. You know, you can see who he serves. Or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. This is why they, they claim to be worshiping on Sunday after the sun, S-U-N, not S-O-N, right? The sun's day. They claim to be worshiping on the sun, the S-U-N day, right? Which is the first day of the week. And then you got this goddess Ishtar was not just a fertility god of the sun, but of the moon. So you have Easter Sunday, Easter Moon's Day, right? Monday. And then when Tammuz got killed, she told everybody to take a pig, kill him, and, uh, and put it on the table. These elites love nothing more for us to go off. This is why they set themselves up. And not even top elites, they just wicked. But these other ones claim to be who we are. They'll set it all up and make it seem like that we're the wicked ones and have us follow those traditions. Now, if they were so righteous, why wouldn't they have the whole world following after the right tradition? You know why that is? Because those wicked people in that land that set this all up, if they found out that we start following our own tradition, that we might be connected to it. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep the connection broken from what we believe. But now you're going to have our greedy people who will go to church on Sunday just for Sunday night to eat that glazed ham. That's why you have what you call an Easter ham. That come from Tammuz as well. It's it's uh, plenty, plenty history on that, man. But these guys, um, these pastors and preachers, he was using a theological, you know, aspect of the whole argument. And then he was just talking, you know, in circles. He wasn't really bringing them anything you know far as truth his truth was we just worship we believe in the resurrection i think he said something like that we believe in a resurrection we believe in jesus we believe in this and believe in that but you know what the scripture says you know many speak sweetly with their lips but their heart is far from me yahweh said it which was quoted um uh, i believe in uh, isaiah I'll get that too. We can see this in Matthew 15 and 8. This people draw off nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And this is these pork chop preachers. And this is what I would have laid on them, man. You know, why aren't you following what Yahweh said to do? And then Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. And then when you go into the Gentile, then we carry it somewhere else. I mean, when you're dealing with the law, then I would have went into it with the law. But you know why these brothers get tripped up? And you know why they go to this group of Sakari and those various groups? Because they kind of cling to that part of the doctrine that you can keep the whole law. And you can't. That's how they be getting caught up. Anyway, this preacher, this preacher is off, which we know he's off, but he talked his way out of really a debate out of the truth okay and this preacher gets up there and say i just love these guys but you know it really kind of got to me when they tried to change it up he don't love these guys you can hang that up man anything to mess with his congregation and money all these guys are set up to keep you back in church and i kind of like it i kind of like the fact that the most high is using these people to keep the phonies where they are to keep those people who not really serious to come to us and say, okay, and then they come into the truth and really don't believe. So it's kind of good that these uh, vocab and these pastors are set up to keep all the the um, the wicked, the ones that's not serious about the truth, keep them flocked and staged in those churches. Because no matter what happens, you're not going to stop it. You're not going to stop the elect from waking up. You're not going to stop the, the people from waking up. We get people come up to our camp consistently, you know, saying we hear the word of G GMS, you know, and they say they follow some other camps, but the fact that the words of the Lord is coming out, 
you can't stop it. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.